Okay, so let's start the class. And uh, I don't know why so few people. Um, so before we start, last time I did a lot of demo and I show you that if there is a current and the current is going this way and you have a magnetic field, the magnetic field is going this way. Using the cross product, you're going to see that the force has to be perpendicular both to the current and both to the magnetic field. That will be the maximum force that you get. And then because it's a cross product, you're going to have a sign, sign of this angle here. So if instead of having a 90 degrees angle between the current and the magnetic field, you have something a little bit smaller. So it's going to be sine, for example, 45. And the force will be smaller, of course, by a factor of 1.44. But if there is no angle between the current and the magnetic field, if the current and the magnetic field are parallel to each other, sine of zero is zero, so there is no force. So typical conceptual question that I try to trick uh, students with, if you have a current aligned with the magnetic field, there is no force. When you are using the right hand um, rule, remember that force here is only for the current, so positive charge. Okay? A current is just positive charge moving. If you have a beam of electron instead, so electrons are negative, so the force will be just in the opposite, right? So you find for the protons, and if you have electrons, you just take the opposite. Is that clear? And last time I show you how to apply that force to uh, uh, how to build motors. It was Michael Faraday who built the first motor, by the way. And I told you, you know, an uh, easy way to get extra credit, like let me show you uh, the simple motor that you can build. All you need is a triple A or double A battery. And you have here, you have neodymium magnet that you can find there. These are very cheap because here it's made of, I don't know what, uh, but it's thick, it's thicking. So you have like uh, uh, iron or, or steel, so it's sticking to the battery. So now you're going to have a magnetic field. Magnetic field, remember, magnetic lines always circulate out of the north into the south, you know, out of the north. So going, so that will be the north and that will be the south. Because it's sticking here, that battery becomes magnetized so everything happens like you have a big magnet here and you're going to have a magnetic field and because you connect this to here so here you have a connecting wire it could be like a huge paper clip you know the big paper clip that you can bend then you can use your right hand um minus, so if you connect here, the current is going to flow in this direction, so it's going to be in this direction, and then you have the magnetic field this way, this way, right, because magnetic field does something like this, so the current, the magnetic field, the force is going to be here, so you're going to apply a torque. In a motor, of course, you will have two forces, so you have a torque applied. In that case, there is no, no force on the other side, of course, there is no current flowing here. So let me do that again with my right hand. Uh, the current flows from here to there, from plus to minus. They are moving positive charges going this way. Magnetic field can go that way. So I don't know which one is north and south. It could be that way, right? So the force will be in the blackboard or towards you. So it's going to apply a force and it's going to spin. So it's a very easy demo to do if you want uh, to build that. And you, you can do, it's, it's kind of art. You, you have 
all kind of uh, okay you can find that it's on youtube if if you want to make it uh, more advanced you can also build a very simple motor here you can uh, that's that's the one i built except I kind of the one i built except my, mine was very good <laughs> So the idea here is that you have a neodymium magnet again. So you're going to have a magnetic field uh, going through that loop. You're going to have current flowing from plus. So it's going to flow like this. It's going to flow in that loop and it's going to flow back into the battery. And I think for the pop quiz, do remember that the source of magnetism is moving charges so if you have a loop of current remember what i told you last time if you have a current so flowing let's say the, the current is flowing uh, from of course it's going to flow this way right i have dc i don't even have ac okay so i have dc because that thing turned ac to dc so i'm going this way i take my right hand the current is going this way the magnetic field is spiraling around, okay? Magnetic field like to go around. Do you remember that? I show you a simulation. So the magnetic field go around that wire. And if, of course, here the wire, if the current goes this way, the magnetic field like to circulate around. Is that clear? Okay. I show you that last time. I can show you the simulation. However, imagine that. So the current goes this way, and the magnetic field circulates around. Okay, circulate around. Now, if I make a loop, look at that. If I make a loop, okay, what's going to happen? So let's say the current goes this way. Okay, so you wrap your right hand around the loop. And look at your thumb. That means that size become the north, and that side will become the south. So what you are making here, you are making an electromagnet. And last time in class, I show you mine. You can do it very easily with a screwdriver. You take a screwdriver. You know the the tip will be the core of your electromagnet. You go around, so you will magnetize the core, the screwdriver, which is made of steel. You bring all the magnetic field inside, okay? So it makes the magnet stronger. And if the current flow in this direction, that will be the north, okay? So again, if you have a loop of current, you look at the direction of the current, you wrap around your thumb here, will give you, that will be your north, that will be the south. Is that clear? If I make two loop, I will multiply the magnetism by two, okay? It will be two times stronger. I will have twice the magnetic field in magnitude. Three loop. And if I make loop, 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 what do I get? I get a solenoid, right? An inductor. That's how, that's what you have, for example, in the MRI. So, for example, here, you're going to have current flowing, loop, 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 loop. So, that little loop will become a magnet. Okay, you can even see if the current flow this way, north will be down. Okay, so on that side and south will be on the other side. And then you go back here. So, because I have a magnet here, it's going to spin until north here is facing south. And there is, there is no trick, there is no secret. Then my loop will be stuck and it stops spinning. However, there is a trick. And the trick is that side is all sanded out because, of course, this, is, this has like some varnish around. So of course, otherwise it will touch, right? So it will be isolated. So, but here you send out all your wire. And on that side, you send only three fourths of it, and one fourth is not sanded out. 
So that way it cannot be stuck because at some point it's going to lose contact and keep spinning. Okay, so that will behave like a magnet and it will be pushed and pulled and it's going to spin. So depending on what you want to build, you know, I give you extra credit. So this one is worth more than extra credit because it's harder to build. Okay, it's called, uh, you, you can just go on YouTube. Is that clear? So I, I want to make things uh, clear. So let me show you another simulation to make sure that, because once you understand in physics, when you understand the concept, you know, everything else is just boring math. So it goes to the fact that are you good at math or not? But physics, it's all about understanding the concept. Once you understand the concept, then if you're good at math, you know, it's very easy A. Eh? So I want to make sure you understand the... So you see here, you have a wire that was an experiment, remember, done in Copenhagen by Orsted in the 19th century. He was playing with a battery because at the time it was just being developed by Volta. And it just happened that he had a compass on his desk and, you know, holy moly, you know, all of a sudden the compass start to, to spin which means that electricity was producing a magnetism in space. So it was changing the property of space around. And depending where the plus, plus goes this way, magnetic field will uh, circulate in this direction. Okay. Uh, notice how the lines are uh, brought together here, higher density. That's because, of course, it's going to be higher magnetic field here, lower magnetic field here, it decreases as 1 over the distance, 1 over R. So it's inversely proportional. And let me say it again, if you make loop, 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 you get yourself an electromagnet. That's the thing I showed you last time, I brought it in class. If you put a screwdriver inside or if you put a core, what you are doing is those magnetic fields here that are just losing the energy of the battery in space, you bring all those lines inside your core, which is a piece of iron or, or soft iron that you shove in that will be magnetized and the magnetic field will be amplified. So depending which way the current uh, spin, so for example here you see that here is the north because it's attracted by the south here and that will be the north. So that means the current is spinning this way, which makes sense, right? So it's, it's spinning in this direction, then the sun here shows you the north pole. So this is north. And this is south. Is that clear? So it's spinning in this direction. That's north, north pole, south pole. So south is attracted to north. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear. Okay, so if you put a, a loop inside the magnetic field, it's like putting a magnet, so it's going to be acted upon by, by a torque that we defined last time. So let me make sure that it's clear. If you have a loop of current here, I, okay, you go around with your hand, so in that case that will be counterclockwise, the thumb is up, that means that's going to be your north side and that will be your south side. So that little loop of current will behave like a bar magnet, north and south. And the next unit I will tell you the, the math, the, the, the magnetic field, but of course if I increase the number of loops I'm going to make my magnet stronger. So this is called electromagnet. 
if you put that little magnet here, electromagnet, that uh, it's called uh, current carrying loop inside the magnetic field. So I have my magnetic field here. Okay, so that will be my magnetic field. You need its Tesla, so it's a vector. So you can see that maybe here it's going to be the north here, here it's going to be the south. So what's going to happen? So first of all, imagine that you have a surface here. Okay, so that will be a surface area A. You use your thumb again, okay, and it's convenient to or have an orientation for your area. So you can make like a small vector that I call that the unit vector and hat. It just orients my little loop here, right? It's just to have an orientation. So then I can find the angle. What's going to happen if I put that little loop inside? So let's find out. I have maybe another color here. So I put my little loop here. And remember, that's going to be the north. Everything happened like that's the north side here and the south side. And that will be my invisible. You know, it's just math and hat that tells me that my thumb is up. And that give me the normal force, uh, the normal, that's a normal vector. So if you do a little bit of calculus, because it's supposed to be a calculus-based physics, right? And this is the area A. So the area A, you can think of that as a vector. The magnitude is A, the orientation is N hat. Okay, it's just that if you have an area A, right, you can always decide, okay, that will be my orientation N hat, so A, can think of that as a vector, the magnitude is A and N hat, okay? So that will be a unit vector. What's going to happen? Is it going to stay like this? Is it happy to be like that? Or is it going to spin? Spin, because anything in nature wants to go to the lower level of energy. So it wants to spin in such a way, of course, that the north side will face the south side, and the south side will face the north side. But interestingly, you see that using your thumb, you see that that, that little N here always want to align with the magnetic field, and that's a secret, right? Doing this, that loop here, and it's called a, actually a small loop like this, it's called a magnetic dipole. Okay, because remember when we had an electric dipole with a plus and a minus, the electric field will go from plus to minus. You have that configuration here. So likewise, here you're going you're gonna to have also something like this. This magnetic field goes out of the north into the south. So this is called the magnetic dipole. And if you place a magnetic dipole, so a little loop in a magnetic field, it's going to spin. It's going to be acted upon by a torque, like we discussed last time. It's such a way it's going to be at its lower level of energy. Is that clear? So it's always spinning in such a way that that little n, that little vector that you use your whole right hand rule will be al always aligned with P. Is that clear? So we're going to see that we're going to call the magnetic moment equals to the number of line, uh, the current, and um, the area. It's, it's uh, similar to the electric dipole, if you remember. So we're going to see that next. But I just want to give you some appetite uh, why, why, why is it important? Because let's say you have an MRI, and let's say you are looking at your, I hate MRI, I don't know if you did an MRI, but if you are claustrophobic like I am, it's a terrible experience. Like at some point, I wonder, you know, maybe they forgot me in that machine, how am I going to get out of here? I start to panic, you know, it's, so it's not great if you are 
claustrophobe. So that's me here. No, actually, I, I am more like this. So th there is a magnetic field. No, there is um, first, yes, there is a magnetic. No, first, there is no magnetic field, let's say. So, you know, in the soft tissue, like the brain, so MRI is good for the brain to look at the brain. It's soft tissue and it's mainly made of water, okay? It's very uh, squishy and, and liquid, a lot of liquid in the brain, soft tissue, right? So uh, H2O is made of uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen is made of a proton. A proton will spin, has some rotation. So on all those little protons from hydrogen, you know, it's like a loop. So you have little loop here, a loop of current, you know, but it's all, a, all direction is random. So those little protons, they are spinning on themselves, but their direction is random. And then I apply a magnetic field in the MRI. I told you that's why MRI can be very dangerous, right? If someone forgot like a fire extinguisher, like it happened, boom, you, you, you know, you crush your skull. That's not great. So what's going to happen to all those little loop? They're going to align themselves, okay? They're going to align themselves with the magnetic field. So they're going to all go like this. And again, these are protons that belong to your hydrogen, that part of the brain. So they go like this. And because it's quantum physics, quantum physics, you know, they have sometimes they, they do the opposite that they are supposed to do. So some of them are in this direction, but most of them will be in this direction, right? And then you send a radio wave. So that's why MRI is not dangerous because uh, less dangerous than a CAT scan, for example, because it's radio wave, it's not X-ray and it's not gamma rays. So all those little loops are going to be excited. Okay, so what does it mean that they are excited? That means they're going to flip. Okay, so now they go to a higher level of energy. They flip over. So they flip over and they have a high energy level, okay? Because now their north is facing the north and their south is facing the south. So they go to a higher level of energy, right? So what's going to happen? They're going to all flip the other side. So they flip on the other side here in the MRI again. So they all flip in the other side. So all this little magnets inside your head are excited. They go to a higher level of energy, you know, maximum energy possible. And then you stop the radio wave. And of course, you, you need to have the resonant frequency, okay? You need to have the right frequency for your radio wave. If you don't have this exact proper frequency, nothing happens. So you excite them, and then they're going to relax. Okay, so it's like they get high and then they get drunk and then, you know, they burp out all their energy out. And when they burp out their energy, they're going to burp out radio wave back in all direction in three dimension. And you are being highlighted by high radio wave from inside out. And that's how you have MRI. Because all around your head, you're going to have a donut. You know, when you take an MRI, there's a kind of a donut here. And this is all sensors connected to a computer here. And you can see what's inside your head. You can see your brain. So you are being highlighted from inside to outside. So even if you're not into physics, you know, it has a lot of application in biology. Um, it's called tomography. Okay, so you get a 3D image by the computer thanks to all those sensors that are placed around your head. Any question? All right, so just to tell you that, you know, uh, you can use physics to understand MRI. So calculus part, as I told you, you need to find an orientation for your loop of current. So what you do with your hand, right hand, uh, you go around like this. The thumb is up. 
Again, that means this size will be a north, this side will be a south, and the thumb will show you the direction of your surface, right? So A can be thought as a surface, N is the unit vector here, so we can define what we call the magnetic moment. Is that clear? So each time you have a loop of current inside the magnetic field, it wants to rotate. It will be applied by a torque such as N will align itself with B. Okay? I think there is a question on the pop quiz, or there will be definitely a question on quiz 3, so make sure you understand that. I think we did that. Again, okay? So now you can understand what's happening. After uh, I explain how it works, if you look at this one, you want to understand how it works. Everything, uh, no, 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 it's a, it's a sin. So anyway, so you see here, take your right hand. Where is the little vector n, up or down? You wrap around the loop, huh? You go, you go, you look at the current. You follow the current, and the current goes counterclockwise. The thumb is up, right? So n, n is up. And what did I told you? That it's it's a, it's not happy to be this way because now you have a north side here, and that will be the south side. So what's going to happen? It's going to rotate, okay? It's going to rotate this way, such as N is parallel and in the same direction as B. Is that clear? So as long as it's not the case, there is a torque. Is that clear? So that thing is going to rotate here, such as... Uh, I, I don't know how to make it, but such as it's going to rotate here and that N will be here, and now it's happy and there is no more torque, okay? Because there is still a force, but here you're going to have an up force here, a down force here, so there is no torque applied. It cannot spin anymore. That's why I told you when you build your own motor, you still need a trick so it keeps spinning. So you will remove like a little bit here of sand with a sandpaper and, and it will keep spinning. Is that clear? So I think it's clear. Again, here. So in that case, where is the current? So, okay. Can you tell me now where is the N? So the current goes this way. So it should be toward you or away from you? Away, very good, right? So you wrap your right hand, right? Good. So it's going to be, N is going to be here. Do you see? Away, because that's your surface area. Okay, so that's your area here. Okay, so you have the vector A equals the area times N hat, and that's going to spin. Okay, it's going to spin such as N is going to be aligned with B. Is that clear? So it's going to spin this way. There will be a torque until the, the that, so that will be the north side, that will be the south side. So south side has to face the north side. Is that clear? So N, N will be this way, and it's going to spin. You see? You see your normal? Do you see the N here? Okay, so the current goes in this way. Do you see here? You see, when you, when you have a cross, when you have a cross, it means in the black ball, right? So you can have a cross in the black ball. It's a loop that you look from the above. So in the black ball, coming towards you, 
the thumb is in this direction. Okay, so here, if you look that here, that's your loop. You are looking from the above. The current goes in, around, back towards you. This is L. So L, the normal vector, has to align with B to be in its lowest level of energy. But then there is a trick such as it will keep spinning, as have I explained. Okay, so again, that's the trick here. You see? You see? Look at that. This is called brushes. So what's going to happen here when you apply that torque here? Here there is no more torque. But is there any current flowing? No, because it lost contact. And you remember inertia? Inertia, you know, when something spins, it will keep it wants to keep spinning unless unless you will act with a force. Do you understand what's happening? So here you have contact. Okay, so this is engineering. Okay, that's not in uh, even physics. You know, so the current here is flowing. Okay, so n is in this direction. So it's going to spin to lower its level of energy. And if I don't lose contact, I'm going to be stuck because north will be facing south, but because it's losing contact, it will keep spinning. That's how motors work today. If you are doing hobby, you know, if you work on a remote control car and you have to buy a small motor, that's exactly how it works, right? You have brushes, and, and sometimes the brushes, they, they break, and your motor doesn't work anymore, but that's how it works. Again, if you do your right-hand rule, here, 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 the N here is in this direction, so that will be your north side, and in front of you that will be the south side. Now it's happy because you have south, and here you have north, but because it's losing contact, it, there is no more south, no more north, north, so it will keep spinning because of inertia. Isn't that amazing that people developed that in the 19th century? It's such a smart thing to do. So the first motor was developed by Michael Faraday. Remember, Michael Faraday didn't go to school. Okay, he was the son of a blacksmith because in England, you know, if we are, if you were not wealthy, you could not go and have an education. So, but he was still very smart. So he built the first motor, and he's the one who figured out how to produce electricity in a very cheap way. It's only 11 cents per kilowatt hour in Miami. So uh, that's, that's from Michael Faraday. And uh, so I gave you some idea if you want extra credit. So the torque, we already discussed the equation. So when you have a loop of current, you can define what we call the magnetic moment. It's a vector. The magnitude is the current times the area. The direction is given by your right hand thumb. That would be also the direction of the unit vector. You can add the little things on top to show that it's a uh, Vector, we discussed that. I show you that last time. So if you miss the class, I don't know, people are missing classes nowadays. So the torque is the cross product between the moment here and B. I show you that. We did the math last time. So you just go back and look at that. Cross product means that there is a sign that will be the angle between the current. And um, uh, the, 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 the A and B, so that will be the current, the, 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 the force, sorry, the angle between your unit vector N and B, such as when they are aligned, there is no more torque. So if this angle here is zero, the torque is zero. That means it's happy, that's a lower level of energy. We talked about energy when we talked about MRI, and that will be the expression for potential energy. Okay, so 
if if n is in this direction when the the magnetic field is this that direction the mag the potential energy is high and then here it's low so we're going to do some problem here so let's just take an example so try to do this one just math So do the math. So I'm, I'm going to put my little n hat here. And I'm going to put my magnetic field here. That will be that angle thigh. So here it's not happy. Okay, it has a potential energy that is not minimum, minimized. So it's going to spin, if it can spin, to align N with B. Again, because that will be your north side, that will be your south side, that will be north from B, and that will be south, so they want to align itself. Is that clear? When they are aligned, the potential energy is the least. When they are at 180 degrees from each other, like you have in the MRI, then the energy is the greatest, right? So that will be the current, uh, that will be the area of your loop, that will be the number of loop, that will be that angle here. So just plugging in, right? So N will be the number of loop, uh, okay, it seems that it's just one loop. Okay, times the current, 5, so I'm going to multiply by 5, times the area, so I have to convert to meters. Okay, then times the current, uh, I already did, times B, which is 30 times 10 to the negative 3, And I suppose that since they don't give you any angle, I suppose that the angle is 90 degrees. So that means your loop is placed in the magnetic field in this direction. I. Okay, and you have N with your right hand thumb. So that will be 90 degrees, so it's going to spin. And that will be the torque at the moment when that angle is 90 degrees, right? The torque will decrease with the angle. Is that clear? So I repeat a lot myself, so I don't know. Uh, so what do you get? So that's going to be on test one, and I will give you conceptual questions that you cannot Google. Zero point three uh, Newton meters. So that would be one, two, three. So three times ten to the negative three Newton meters. Do you remember torque is the force times the distance? We, we did that last time. I'm not going to do it again. Question? So once you understand the concept, you know, then it's just uh, application. So again, that will be the potential energy. That's a dot product. Okay, so remember what a, a dot product is? You need to have a cosine. So when the loop is, you know, north is facing south, it's not happy, it has too much energy, so it's going to try to spin to lower the level of energy. 
So you remember the dot product? Dot product is a scalar that's going to be minus. So that will be the magnetic moment. So N I A times B times the cosine between N and B. Okay, so they they want to have that they want to have that as small as possible. What's the smallest value here is when you're gonna have a minus one here when the the, the potential energy is minus one. Uh, the cosine. So the potential energy has to be as small as possible. So let's take an example. Okay, let's try to do this one. More, more you do in class, less you have to do at home. I'm very messy, so I don't know. You can try to do it. You can uh, talk to each other, help each other, blah, blah, blah. So first, of course, you identify the physical quantity. You see m square means that's an area. That will be the number of loops. That will be your current. You see it's in amp. And of course, that will be your magnetic field B. Find the magnetic moment of the coil. And remember that by definition, the magnitude of your magnetic moment is the current times the area times the number of loops. Okay, that's by definition, it's, it looks like the electric moment. So that's going to be what? 0 0.45 times 2 times 10 to the negative 4 times 100. Ta -ta -ta. So what do you get? I found something like this. Okay, good. And don't forget the unit, right? I is for amp, meter square is for the area. Yes? Blue on blue, that's not very smart. And then they say find the maximum torque. And remember that the torque, by definition, is I times, I mean, it's the magnetic moment. We already did that, cross B. Okay, with your right hand pull. So it's going to be magnitude of mu, magnitude of B, times the sine between your unit vector and B. Maximum happens when this is equals to 1. That means the angle equals 90 degrees, right? Because they ask for the maximum. Otherwise, it depends on the orientation of the loop placed in the magnetic field, right? So just Send me what you get. So times 9 times 10 to negative 4 times B, which is uh, 0 0.15. Did you do it? Thank you. Newton meters, right? Because you remember the torque applied by a force is force cross R, so that means it's Newton meters, so Newton meters will be for the torque. Okay? So that means that 
What does it mean? It means that you have a magnetic field going in this direction. Uh, again, you have a loop, and that loop has maximum, ma maximum torque applied to it. That means that, that means that, that means that I'm looking for n, n is in this direction. So it wants to rotate. So here you have 90 degrees. It wants to rotate to align itself with the magnetic field. So it's at its lowest level of energy. So again, that's happening when you take a MRI. All those little loops, you know, go to a lower level of energy. They burp out radio waves through your brain from inside out, and you get a 3D image of your brain. It doesn't work for bones, because inside the bones you have calcium and stuff like that, but you don't have a squishy thing. You need to have squishy stuff, like the brain. If your brain is dry, you have to worry about it, right? You don't want to have a dry brain. So here again, definition. Again, you see, you go with your right hand rule. That will be your magnetic moment in the same direction than the area. That will be the torque. And that will be your potential energy. If it's 180 degrees from B, Potential energy will be maximum, will not going to be happy. So it wants to have a minimum one, which, which will be negative, right? So electric dipole. So who? Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, I, I'm such a good, so, I'm so good at finding the best, best slides here. You see, highest energy happen when they are 180 degrees from each other. Lowest energy happen when your vector n is aligned with the vector b. And it's always interesting to compare magnetism and electricity. Remember from the beginning of the se uh, semester, el electric, uh, electric dipole by definition is p. It will be the charge times the distance between the charge. So I, I just remind you, so we can review, you know, for the final. Uh, you have a plus here, Q, and you have a minus here, Q, and that will be an electric dipole. And this is very important, of course, because uh, H2O, the Mickey Mouse head, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Uh, you have a plus here and a minus here, so it's a dipole, electric dipole. Uh, if you put the water molecules inside the microwave, it's going to be acted upon by a torque. But because the microwaves, you know, are changing its AC, so the electric field will always change its direction, the torque is going to be you know, this direction, that direction, this direction, that direction, that's how food can be heated up. So there is a torque depending on the electric field and you have potential energy. And here you have a magnetic dipole and there is a symmetry between them. Here you have a cross product, cross product, dot product, dot product, okay? Application, that's a picture from your book that I have stolen, you know, MRI. Okay, let's try to do this one, 27.9. It comes, it comes from your book. Okay, so try to do it. They are asking for the potential energy, for the change in potential energy. So you have a loop of current. It will be your job to find that little vector here. And it, of course, here it's not happy. So it's going to rotate to align itself with B. So the angle between here and there is 90 degrees. Okay? So do it. We are reviewing for whatever test coming up. So just do it. You can help each other, talk to each other. So you have the radius R here of that loop. That will be the number of turns. So that's from your book, okay?
and you have the current I. So you see the picture here means that the angle is 90 degrees. That will be the angle between N hat and B. So this, they give you the picture, but in a test, you will have to draw that picture. Find the magnitude of the magnetic moment, so mu. Um, of course, the area will be pi r squared, right? So it's going to be pi times 0 0.05 squared. That will be your area. So are you doing it? Uh, 0 0.05 0 0.05 Let me know what you get when you got it What do you get? Do it, do it. Are you sure? Okay, so do 5 times 30 times pi. Yeah, that's more like it. Who said that? 1.8. This is, first of all, is, is it Amen? Oh, okay, I got it, isn't that? Because you always sit in the front and he always sit in the back. Right? He's doing something else. So 1.18 amp meter square. That will be the magnetic uh, moment. Ah. Okay, that will be the radius, right? So what? that's what we get. Then we want to find the torque. So the torque is, by definition, the magnetic moment times the magnetic field times the sine between n hat and b. And, and n hat is in this direction. And this is, this is 90 degrees. And... 1.2, right? So what do you get? Newton meters. That will be the talk. Okay. And then they ask you, uh, rotate for its initial orientation. So from here, so here it has some potential energy. And of course, it's going to rotate such as n hat is parallel to b. So first here you have an angle of 90 degrees and it's going to rotate. What is the change in potential energy? So let's use just the, the equation. So the potential energy is minus B dot mu. So here it has some potential energy and it wants to lower its potential energy. So they want to find the change in potential energy. That means that you want to have the potential energy final minus the potential energy initial. So let's find potential energy initial. 
So it's going to be minus B, which is 1.20 times mu, which is 1.18 times cosine. The angle between B and mu is 90 degrees. Doesn't mean that it's the, the highest potential energy because it's higher when it's opposite. Remember, what matters is the change. So what's going to be the initial potential energy? Zero, very good, very good. Okay, because cosine 90 is zero. Right? Let's find the final potential energy. Okay, so it's going to be minus. I'm just plugging in 120 times 1.18 cosine zero. And cosine zero is one. Very good. So that's going to be one. So that's going to be final minus minus 1.20 times 1.18 minus huh? Yeah, we said that. Michaela, trying to remember all the names, Jules. So what does it mean? It means that it has a lower potential energy that it begins with. With potential energy, it's the rule. There is always a recoil force, a recoil torque that wants to lower the system of energy when potential energy is involved, right? So gravity is a recoil force. Even when something spins and there is like a spring attached to it, you're going to have a recoil force. With magnetic field, that works exactly the same way. The goal is to lower the potential energy. Okay, so a lot of application here. That's those little motors that you are all familiar with. And I, th I think I have like a video. Let's see, I have a video. is basically a current loop that's placed in a magnetic field. So you see the brushes here, okay? The brushes such as even if the loop is rotating, the DC will not rotate, okay? Because it will be very hard to make a battery rotate as well. So you need those brushes. In addition to that, you need to lose contact at some point, as I explained. Typically between the poles of a permanent magnet, or maybe an electromagnet, so we can do it either way. And that loop rotates. It's on some kind of bearings on a shaft. And here's the really clever thing. Toward the left there, you see a battery connected to this structure. But of course, the battery stationary in this loop is rotating, so we somehow got to get the current in there. So we have these little semicircular rotating copper or other metal pieces, and we have things called brushes, which are typically made of wire or carbon, and they're contacting those rotating uh, surfaces, and they're letting electricity flow through. And here's the really clever thing. That connection is called the commutator, and you see a little gap there in the commutator That's the and what happens so if you build your motor for extra credit like the second video i show you you want to make sure that one side is sanded out the other side is only partially sanded out otherwise it will get stuck what happens is That's as secret. the loop rotates it would normally just align itself with the magnetic field as we've just seen but just as it gets near alignment 
that commutator switches past that gap and that reverses which part of the battery is connected to which part of the loop and that reverses the direction of the current in the loop and that means the loop is no longer in alignment with the field. In fact, it's out of alignment and it wants to rotate a whole 180 degrees to get back into alignment and so it tries to do so, but just as it barely gets there, the commutator reverses the direction of the current again and the loop just keeps rotating around. Okay, so that's a different way to do it. You have two gaps. So the current reverse the direction, such as it keeps spinning. The one I show you last time in class, the one that I have built, I send it out just one side. So it's not going to speed, spin as, as, as fast. Isn't that cool? No, without physics, there won't be any technology. So maybe, maybe it will be better, though, I don't know. So, OK, so motors here. Bicycle, you know, all those people that are cheating nowadays, you know, at my time, we didn't have a motor in, in the bicycle. You had to use your muscles. Washing machine, you have motors inside, industrial motor. Motors are everywhere, right? So a lot of application. Okay, so then the same way I told you that current, current is made of moving charge, right? Apply a magnetic field, then you're going to have a force and you are using your high, right hand um, rule. Same thing with a moving charge. By the way, a current is a moving charge. So if you have a moving charge and it's positive, if the charge is moving this way, the magnetic field is moving that direction, is going in this direction, there will be a force here. That force is called the Lorentz force. If the charge is negative, just break your finger like this, and unless you are double jointed. I am double jointed. Look, look what I can do. Can you do this? Can you do that? Like you are in biology, right? So some people are double jointed and they can do this, but not everyone. Oh, you are? Okay. Like, you know how you know if you are double jointed? You see my arms? Can you do something like this? You see how I rotate my arms? That's when you are uh, double jointed. But I, I, actually, it's not very good to be double jointed. So anyway, uh, Q, V, B. Uh, so the right hand rule again, and it has a lot, a lot, a lot of applications. Uh, and I will talk about the applications. So this is called the magnetic force. If there is a charge, so I will try to trick you. Okay, that's how you know. I try to trick students. I will say, okay, a neutron is moving in a magnetic field at right angle. What is the force? And the answer is zero, because you need to have a charge. If there is no charge, there is no force. Plus, the charge has to be moving. If the charge is at rest, there will be no force. So it's not like an electric field. If you have an electric field, and you, you place a charge inside the electric field, it's going to move. But magnetic field, not so. You need to have the charge moving. You need a charge and you need an angle with your magnetic field. So if the charge is moving along the magnetic field or if it has a component along the magnetic field, that will not produce any force. So you have three conditions for magnetic field to happen, which is totally not the same when we did the Coulomb's law, like the, the force inside an electric field, you see that the force is parallel to the electric field. It's not the same. So let me ask you something. Remember from physics one, if a force is a long trajectory, you know it's going to change the speed. But what's going to happen if you have a force like this perpendicular to the speed? Do you think that force can change the speed? Is it, is it pulling in that direction to make it go faster? Or is it pulling in this direction to slow it down? 
No, so it cannot make it go faster. An electric field, yes. So what do you think is going to happen? So what's going to happen? So first of all, remember, when, when you have a charge plus, okay, and uh, let's say there is an electric field in this direction, there's a force, F equals QE here. So there's a force along that electric field, so it's going to move and go faster, right? So you're going to have an acceleration. But what's happening, if you remember from physics, physics 1, and let's say you are spinning a rock and you're, it's attached to a string, right? So the, the thing wants to go in this direction. What's going to happen to it? Okay, that's a bad, forget it. Uh, no, let's take the example of the earth and the moon. So the moon wants to keep going in a straight line at a constant speed. But here you have gravity pulling in this direction, right? Is the moon is, is the moon is gonna spin faster because of the force? No, so what what's the idea of that force here? What will be the effect? It make it what? Stay in place, going into Orbit or going into a huh? what is it doing? Circle. Okay. And how do we call that force that keep a mass on a circular track? Centripetal force. Very good. Okay. Gravity is a centripetal force. Remember that? I want to go in a straight line at a constant speed. What it, does it say? No, you can't. You know, you have to go back here. Centripetal force is a force that is perpendicular to the velocity, so it cannot make it go faster. It cannot make it slower, going slower, but it's curving the mass. Okay, it's keeping it in a circular motion. So it's like you have a horse on, on a leash, you know, with a rope, and, and you're making your horse going around you and around you, but the horse doesn't go faster. You, doesn't, you don't make it go slower. You just keep it on, on the track. So it doesn't have to speed up. So if you have a centripetal force, of course you're going to have a centripetal acceleration. So that centripetal acceleration is like saying, oh, I want to go in a straight line at a constant speed. I want to be here. No, you have to go back here. And, and the rate at which you are coming back here is called a centripetal acceleration. And do you remember what's the uh, centripetal acceleration equation? Remember that from physics one? Centripetal acceleration is okay. I'm, I'm going to take the names of everyone who was with me last semester. So let's see. I have. It's going to be v square over r. So r is the radius of the orbit. And that will be the expression of the centripetal acceleration. Okay? That means if you go really fast, really fast, okay, especially in Miami, people are crazy. You know, they make those turns at a very high speed. It's going to be harder to keep you on the curve. That's why you have so many accidents because they go off tangent, right? They don't have enough friction to keep you on the curve. And of course, if the curve is very small, the curve, you, you have to make a sharp curve. 
Of course, you need to have more force, otherwise off tangent you go. Okay? So, each time you have a magnetic field and you have a moving charge that make an angle, you know, with a magnetic field, you're going to have a force. That force will be a centripetal force. And what it does, it makes the charge go in a circular orbit. It curves it. So an electric field can speed up or slow down a charge, but the magnetic field will spin the charge. Is that clear? Impossible to happen. A particle in a magnetic field is found to have zero magnetic force. So if the particle is neutral, so if it's a neutron, can you have a magnetic force? No, because the charge is zero. If the charge is not moving, can you have a magnetic force? No. Typical conceptual question. If the, the, the particle of the charge is moving along the magnetic field, so the angle is zero, can you have a force? No. You need to have some angle, right? The motion of the particle is opposite to the magnetic field. The force is zero if it's opposite, right? I don't know. I don't understand the question. So the all, all the force, oh, the answer is all of them are possible. So remember, a velocity and B, if they are perpendicular to each other, the force has to be perpendicular. So in this situation, if you have V in this direction, B in that direction, so the force will be along which axis? No, because then it will be parallel to B. It has to be perpendicular to B and Y. Z. It's going to be Z. Do, do your hand. Oh, someone in my other class say, very beautiful flower. Okay? V, B, F. So, very beautiful flower towards you. So, it's going to be Z. Here it's that uh, example when you have an electron and you have to break your finger un unless you are double jointed, right? So V is, is along the Y, B is along the B. So if it was a positive charge, where is the force? Where is the force? Very. But I, of course, I'm opposite than you, okay? It was hard to do. Very beautiful flower. What is the force if it's a positive charge? Negative? Negative X. Very uh, beautiful flower, so it's positive X. But because it's an electron, so it will be negative X. Right? Very beautiful flower. And what about that one? Do you have any force for that one? Is there any force here? No. What about that one? Very beautiful flower. Positive X. So that will be the answer. And here, the force will be which way? X or Y or Z? 
So it's thin fingers like this, right? Very beautiful. Which axis? Uh, very beautiful. It's going to be. Uh, very beautiful. So now, I'm, but it's not going to be the positive x, right? So it's going to be uh, somehow in the y, z plane. It's going to be toward you. Oh, but it's negative, so it's going to be away from you. But it's not positive, so the answer is T. Okay, can you do it quickly instead of talking over there? Quick, 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 this one is easy. Number two, do you have any force here for number two? No. So that's V, very, very beautiful, beautiful flower. The force is toward you. So the charge, three proton. One proton is uh, the same charge as an electron, so 1.6 times 10 to negative Coulomb, 9, negative 9, times V. Mega means 10 to the 6, so 2, two times 10 to the 6 times 0, 1. 0, 1, I don't know why I put 0, 2, times 1. So what do you get? Huh? I don't know, I didn't do it. Did you get that? Yeah? And the force is toward you. Number three, it will be the same thing indeed, except that very beautiful flower. So the force is into the blackboard, right? And here, what is the force here? Z zero. Okay, because the sign, sign of zero is zero. So what's going to happen to it? It's going to start going into a circle. It's going to be curved. No, so the sign is opposite. So that means for one, for one, the force is towards you. Okay, so uh, very beautiful flower towards you. If it was an electron, that means... Very beautiful flower. The force is in, in the blackboard. Okay. Uh, the the way they do it, they just use um, ten to the negative twelve. That will be the symbol F. But it's the same thing. Well, all that is just plugging in, right? Uh, maybe let's do this one. I'm lost in my notebook. It's fine. Uh, let's do this one. This here.
that case here. So it's moving in this direction, but you see it makes an angle of theta. So we, we have to use the angle between B and V. So the force is in this direction. Very beautiful flower. Right? So F, the magnitude of F is Q V B sine the angle between V and B because it's a cross project. Okay, so just plugging in. And it's a proton. You see, we are, we are not far from the speed of light. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. So now we have an angle of 90 degrees, uh, 30 degrees, sorry. Huh? 13? One, three. Did you all get that? Huh? Yes or no? Okay. And then they want to find the acceleration. So we're talking about the centripetal acceleration. That means if, if there is a force here, so this way it's going to start to circle around. So it's going to be the, the, the acceleration will be the force divided by the mass. So it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to negative 13. What's the mass of a proton? I think it's 6.67. I think, I think this is the mass of a proton. You have to check. Yes? Okay, so remember F equals ma, Newton's second law, but here the force is perpendicular to the velocity, so that will be a centripetal force. Is that right? Huh? 10 to the 13? Meter per second per second. Is that right or no? You see that if the if this is parallel to B, there is no force. If it's perpendicular to B, it's going to be the maximum force that you can get. If the angle is between 0 and 90, so then it will be in between. Is that the right number that we got? Yeah. Okay, the acceleration, there was a mistake. Oh, it's my fault. It's my fault. Uh, the mass, the mass is 1.67. So it's my fault. It's 1.67 for the mass of a proton. Right, right. So 9.6 times 10 to the 13 meter per second per second because that's the mass of a proton.
Okay, uh, that's from your textbook, 27.1. And uh, why don't you try to do it for next time? I just want to show you. Maybe I will ask you that for the pop quiz on Thursday. You, you have to make the drawing. Extra credit. Yeah, we can do it as extra credit. Why, why don't you solve it on a um, piece of paper and bring it for Thursday and give you extra credit? You have to show your work. And you have to trace because you see that the, the, the velocity has two components, x component and z component. And only the x component matters because the z component is along the magnetic field, so it's not going to work. Again, you, you need to make a drawing so you can find the angle between v and b. Okay, because the velocity has two components, one along the x, one along the z, and only the component perpendicular to B counts. The other component doesn't work. Or you just use the equation. You use Q, V, B, sine, the angle between B and V. So you have to do geometry just to show what's the angle between B and V. Is that clear? So if you put your name very clearly with a nice handwriting, if, if I cannot read, I'm, I'm not going to grade. Just to show you very quickly. To demonstrate a Crookes tube. A so this is called the vacuum tube or CRT, cathode ray tube. You have an electron gun Electron gun is just like you're applying a voltage across that tube. Here it's going to be negative. Here it's going to be positive. Here you have a filament that gets very, very hot. So electrons are going to be burped out. Inside that tube, you remove the air. So you're going to have a beam of electrons. Guys, can you watch the two minutes, right? You have a beam of electron moving from minus to plus, and if you bring a magnet... ...cathode ray tube, we need a high voltage power source, such as this one. We need the Crookes tube, which has a metal cathode, a metal anode, a screen that has been coated with a phosphorescent material that gives off light when struck by electrons, and a bar magnet. As we turn on the screen, we notice that the electrons are emitted from the cathode, and as they strike the fluorescent screen, we're able to see the cathode ray, this stream of electrons illuminated. We can use a magnet to show the deflection of that stream. Here we can see the electrons being deflected by the magnet. The cathode ray moves upward. If we reverse the magnet, we would predict that the beam would be deflected in the opposite direction. And we observe that the beam is deflected downward. Isn't that cool? That's how the electron was discovered. A magnetic field curves, deflect charges only if they are moving and if there is a component of the velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field. That's super cool, okay? This is a vacuum tube, and this is the ancestors of the transistors that you use in your laptop if you are in a computer science. They, they, they had those huge tubes that was, that's why the computers were so big at the time. Okay, and it's called a CRT, not to be confusing with the CRT, but cathode ray tube. Okay, so there is a pop quiz 